This video has explicit content and only should be viewed by adults. Jumbo Shalawam Tribe, hope all is well. Today we have a lengthy one, so sit back. Today we're talking about Joseph Cooney. Joseph Cooney is a Ugandan militant who founded the Lord's Resistance Army, also known as the LRA, a Christian fundalist organization designated as a terrorist group by the United Nations peacekeepers, also the European Union and various other governments. Cooney was likely born in 1961 in Odek, a village east of Gulu. I believe I'm saying that right, forgive me. In northern Uganda, two farmers. His mother is a farmer and his father is a farmer. He is the member of the Okali people. He was either the youngest or the second youngest of six children in the family. Cooney had an overall good relationship with his siblings, but was quick to retaliate in disputes when confronted. He would often resort to physical violence. In 1995, Cooney rose to prominence in Okali land after the Holy Spirit movement of Alice Uma, also known as Laquina. During the Ugandan Bush War of 1981 through 1986, it had accumulated in mass looting of livestock, rape, burning of homes, genocide, and murder by the Museveni army. I'm going to put that word up there. Forgive me for butchering that word. It's tough. The atrocities committed by the Museveni's army, now known as the Ugandan People's Defense Force, led to the creation of the LRA by Joseph Cooney. Cooney has been implicated in the abduction and recruitment of child soldiers. The LRA have had many battles and confrontations with the government, NRA, RUPDF within Uganda and in South Sudan for 10 years. In 2008, the Ugandan army invaded the DRC and searched for the LRA. So that means they're searching and looking for Joseph Cooney. Cooney's control of the child warriors appears total. He tells them committed to God's cause. But Cooney is not prepared to bet his own life on this belief. In November of 2013, Cooney was reported to be in poor health in the eastern car town of Lusoka. Looking back at the LRA's campaign of violence and the Guardian stated in 2015 that Cooney forces have been responsible for the deaths of 100,000 in the abduction of 60,000 children. These various atrocities committed including raping young girls abducting them for the use of sex slaves. That's terrible, man. Breaks my heart. The actual number of LRA militia members have varied significantly over the years reaching as high as 3,000 soldiers by 2017. The organization membership had shrunk significantly to an estimated 100 soldiers in April of 2017 
both the U.S. and the Ugandan governments entered efforts to find Kuni and fight the LRA, stating that the LRA no longer poses a significant security risk to Uganda. In October 2006, the ICC announced the arrest warrants has been issued for five members of the Lord's Resistance Army for the crimes against humanity following a sealed indictment on the next day. Ugandan Defense Minister Omama Mobabsi, Mobabsi revealed that the warrants including Kuni, his deputy Vincent Oti, and LRA commanders Raska Luweya, Okdat Oduhambu, and Dominique Ogawan, the Ugandan army killed Bukowiya on the 12th of August 2006. Kuni has long been one of Africa's most notorious warlords. He is currently one of the most wanted African militants as well. He has been accused by government entities of ordering the abduction of children to become child soldiers and sex slaves. Approximately 66,000 children became soldiers and 2 million people were displaced internally from 1986 to 2009 by his forces. Kuni was indicted in 2005 for war crimes and crimes against humanity. After the September 11 attacks, the U.S. called the LRA a national terrorist group international terrorist group. In August 2008, the U.S. Department of State declared Joseph Cooney a specifically designated global terrorist. So with those brutal images we just saw a few seconds ago, those were all at the hands of Joseph Cooney's tactics, his war tactics, if you will. And they remain brutal. He often forced children to kill their parents or siblings with machetes or some type of blunt tool. He mutilated those who stood in his way. He cut the lips off of people and disfigured them. Also cutting off the noses and hands of a lot of innocent civilians. And as you can see, a lot of Joseph Cooney's Kid soldiers were very, very young. It's very disheartening to see that. So, according to the World Wide Web, he's in the Sudanese region of Darfur, and the U.S. and Ugandan government just suspended their efforts in looking for him. They don't feel he's a threat anymore. So also, before I leave, I know I made an error in pronouncing this guy's name. I know it's not Cooney, it's Coney. And I did it for a reason. I didn't feel like going back, changing, you know, Coon to Coney, you know. Because if I would have did that, the video would have took forever. It already takes forever editing. So yes, the proper way to pronounce this guy's last name would be Coney, not Coney. My mistake, my error. If anybody knows the update of this guy, please let me know down below in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Thank you. Shalom. Until this week, few Americans had heard of Joseph Kony or the atrocities he is said to have committed in Central Africa. But watch what happened when a charity posted a video on the internet to raise awareness about Kony and his alleged crimes. On Monday, the video had been viewed 66,000 times. The next day, 9,600,000 views. And today, 50 million and counting. In less than a week, it's become the most viral video ever. And we asked Ben Tracy to look into who's behind it. The night I first met Jacob, he told me what he and other children in northern Uganda were living through. The online film shows a Ugandan boy's fight for survival. My brother, 
tried to escape. Then they kill using panga. They cut his neck. The 30-minute story is designed to raise awareness of the alleged war crimes of Joseph Kony, the rebel leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, in Uganda. He's accused of kidnapping as many as 30,000 children in the past 26 years. Turning the girls into sex slaves and the boys into child soldiers. And he forces them to kill their own parents. A San Diego-based charity called Invisible Children produced the video. It went online Monday. The charity's website asked viewers to message 20 celebrities to get them to spread the word about the film. Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, and Ryan Seacrest mentioned the campaign to their millions of followers on Twitter and Facebook. Lindsay Turrentine is the editor-in-chief of the technology website CNET. They've been really smart about targeting a set of people. And the celebrities are, it's a broad set of celebrities, but what most of these celebrities have in common is a huge social media following. The result? An African militia leader is now the topic of conversation at schools across the country, including this one in Los Angeles. It's amazing how people got really interested, interesting in this topic because um, Uganda children are so far away. Jason Russell made the film. He's advocated for international action against Kony for nearly a decade. The film is part of Invisible Children's campaign to ratchet up pressure to arrest the warlord by the end of 2012. We are going to make Joseph Kony a household name. But in Uganda, journalist Rose Bell Kagamire thinks the film exaggerates the facts and wonders what lasting good it will do. It simplifies a war that is so complex and gives this picture that, you know, only a certain person, if a college student in America gives them money, they will stop conning. So I'm wondering, where is the link between them getting money and stopping Joseph Kony, who has been fighting for, 25, uh, for 26 years? Invisible Children has been criticized for what it spends on media productions and marketing instead of direct aid to Africa. Last year, the charity took in $13.8 million. They spent $8.9 million. Just $3.3 million went to programs in Central Africa. Zach Barrows works for Invisible Children. So all of the money that's raised doesn't go to the ground in the conflict region because if it did, we wouldn't be able to create these films and we wouldn't be able to spread the word like we are. And by so smartly using social media, they have been able to spread the word better than anyone ever has online. On Wednesday, Scott, this Central African warlord was trending higher on Twitter than quarterback Peyton Manning leaving the Colts or Apple unveiling its new iPad. And more viewers in the Academy Awards. Ben, thanks very much.